On our first episode of the Crystal Education Series, we discussed quartz. I mentioned that it is the second most abundant crystal on Earth. What I didn't tell you was what the most abundant mineral is, and that's feldspar. Like quartz, feldspar is a general name of a very large group of aluminum silicate crystals. The group is so large it's estimated to comprise as much as 60% of the Earth's crust. While the word feldspar may not conjure any specific images of crystals in your mind, you've probably seen many examples of various types of feldspar. Sunstone, larvikite, amazonite, or moonstone to name a few. But today we will be discussing my favorite crystal in the feldspar family, labradorite. Labradorite is considered a phenomenal gemstone. This means it displays an unusual optical effect when light is shown on it. Some other examples of phenomenal gemstones are tiger's eye, color-changing alexandrite, or star sapphires. Labradorite, like opal, has the amazing ability of turning light into a spectacular display of beautiful colors. Labradorite is found in many places in the world. Much of the pieces seen on today's market are actually mined in Madagascar. However, labradorite is also found in Russia, Ukraine, Finland, and even Newfoundland. But where was it first discovered? Where did it get its name? For the answer, we explore a little bit of Canadian history. In the late 1700s, missionaries from Moravia, a province in the Czech Republic, came overseas to Labrador, Canada to share their Protestant religion with the native Eskimo Inuits who inhabited the area. While familiarizing themselves with the area, they discovered beautiful, colorfully iridescent rocks on the Isle of Paul, an island near their settlement. They called the stones Labradorite after the location where they were found, and they were admired so much that the Moravian even sent pieces back to Europe. There, it was made into gemstones and set into jewelry that was highly coveted by the Europeans. Though the Moravian missionaries are credited with the discovery of Labradorite, the native Inuits knew of it long before it was named. So there's a couple of legends surrounding exactly where Labradorite came from originally. Uh, they say that it was actually pieces of the Aurora Borealis that froze really deeply and fell to the earth as these Labradorite stones. But probably my favorite legend is the one that's kind of most popular, I guess you could say. And it's about an Inuit warrior who was walking along the beaches of modern-day Labrador many, many years ago. And he happened to catch out of the corner of his eye like a blue flash. So he went over to investigate and saw that the light was coming from within a rock. He had his spear with him, so he decided to take his spear and kind of chip away at this rock and try to get this light out. And he successfully did it. And when the rock broke open, the light shot into the sky and created the Aurora Borealis. And just enough of this light has been forever encased in all of the stone that it is just in these stones for all time. It's easy to see why the legends about Labradorite compare it to the Aurora Borealis. Turn it a certain way in the light and the stone reflects colorful shades of blue, green, teal, purple, orange, yellow, pink, and a display known as Labradorescence. So something that I actually discovered during the research of this stone for this video, it just kind of blew my mind a little bit. I never really thought about it, it totally makes sense but I hadn't thought about it before, and that is where Labradorite gets its color from. And in order to understand that, we have to talk a little bit about light refraction. So a lot of people are familiar with prisms, and that is exactly what light refraction is. It is when a light comes through the atmosphere from its source, and it passes through a translucent or transparent object. So what happens is as it enters that translucent material, the light wave slows down, it might bounce off of uneven surfaces and it breaks the light apart. So whereas it comes in as a pure white light, it gets broken apart into a visible light spectrum. And that is how you see different colors refracting back. You have seen this in nature with rainbows. It's a very easy example. Um, you've seen it perhaps in a parking lot on an oil slick. And you may have even seen it in other gemstones. This happens with Australian opal. 
It also happens sometimes with quartz. You see little rainbows in quartz. And it is a very, very strong example in Labradorite. So the whole spectrum of colors that you may see that's bouncing back at your eye, that is just, that's light. It's not actually the color of the stone. It is, it is the light that is getting refracted within the stone and sent back to our eye. And depending on how much material the light transfers through, how thick that material is, how much it, the light gets bent, that's gonna determine what color we see when the light comes back at our eye. So that is why Labradorite can have a whole, you know, the whole spectrum of colors. There's a variety of Labradorite on the market that displays exceptional bright and heavily saturated colors. This variety is known as Spectralite. Spectralite is found in only one location, Finland, where it was originally discovered when soldiers were unearthing stone material to create a physical barrier between them and their enemies during World War II. Today, feldspar is an important ingredient in ceramics and pottery. It's also used in fiberglass insulation, plate glass, and some paints and plastics. Feldspar is crushed down to be mixed into these various applications. But the feldspar mineral labradorite, however, is often mined for its natural beauty and kept almost as is, with cutting and polishing being the main treatments of the stone. Labradorite is often carved into sculptures and even occasionally cut into large slabs and used for countertops and sink tops. But as was true when it was first discovered, today Labradorite is most commonly used in jewelry. If you are attracted to the beauty of Labradorite and want to have some on display in your home, consider keeping a piece near areas where you are most productive. Perhaps on your desk, in your crafting room, or even in your kitchen if cooking is your passion. This is because Labradorite is said to suppress negative emotional energies and allow you to tap into your best self and your limitless potential. The reason is that the stone, when viewed at certain angles, is rather dark and dull, but turning it reveals the hidden light within. This can be a representation of us. The light is in us, always there. We just have to find it and let it shine. Because of the affirmative influence of the stone, many people choose to wear Labradorite to deflect negative energy and promote positive thought processes throughout the day. With Labradorite being a six to six and a half out of 10 on the Mohs hardness scale, it will resist scratching and is certainly suitable for everyday wear. All right, so do you own any Labradorite? And if you don't, are you inspired to find some now? Hopefully after watching this video, you understand why I love it so much and why it's the most popular stone in my personal jewelry collection, Exhibit A and Exhibit B right here. <laughs> and let me know, did you learn something interesting about Labradorite while watching this video? And did I miss any information that you think I should have put in here? Let me know that as well. Also, if there's a mineral or crystal or gemstone, anything that you'd like me to highlight in a future video, leave it in the comments. I'm going to start a list and hopefully we can get to all of them in future crystal education videos. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and be sure to hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it certainly helps the channel out a lot. So hit it on your way out and hopefully I'll catch y'all on the next one. Thanks so much everybody. Bye.